Hello, everyone. Welcome to another discussion of a monster. In this case, we are doing the sixth uh, volume of the perfect edition. I've been told this is how to refer to this now, which is for, I guess, the uh, original publication, volumes 11 and 12. So got all that straight. Volume six, perfect edition. So Murphy, Murphy, how are you feeling? We got a couple things right. We are the superior Lungas. We are way better than Lunga, right? <laughs> we we make huge assumptions and then run with them, but we are sometimes right. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't want to actually calculate the percentage of correct predi predictions, but we got a couple big ones right there. I just want to feel good, so we won't do any calculating. Right. <laughs> 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 let's start with uh the one you got which was oh i thought we would start with yours, yours oh well i mean real. either way either way uh they're oh both really we can start actually mine chronologically comes first chronologically yeah. comes first so we'll start with that so wig. Da -da! and uh, i just love how johan is so perfect that when he takes off the wig he has perfect hair but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even register that. My my laughing moment was that he he went back to his apartment to take off the wig, take off his makeup, do the reveal for us, and then put it all back on so that he could go out and do the killing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a reveal. I was I just felt I, I have to tell you, Murphy, I I stopped on that page and I told my wife, who has no idea what's going on in this because she hasn't read it before. I said, I got it right. I was like, <laughs> And I showed her the picture of Johan with the wig, and she's like, "Okay, dear, nice. that's that's nice." <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I I never, never on my own would I have guessed that this was Johan in a wig. So when I turned <laughs> the page, and that's what was happening, oh, I cracked up. I probably looked like a lunatic sitting there looking <laughs> at my manga so hard. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it was it was a it was a very significant moment <laughs> for me. I mean, it it makes sense because they kept emphasizing how similar their faces are, uh, Nina and Johan, um, and, and he's posing. He's using the name Anna Liebert, uh, which is her, her old name, one of her names. Yeah, so yeah, it makes sense. And there there were enough, I think, clues at least for <laughs> for somebody like me to say. Hmm. How is that happening? Because that's just not Nina. That yeah. can't be Nina. Yeah. So what else makes sense here, right? So anyway, no, I thought funny. your call was even cooler. Actually, the one that you prediction With that Grimmer. you Grimmer. Grimmer, yeah, Grimmer becomes even Grimmer in this volume, doesn't he? In a way, I still love him, but yeah. you learn that that smile. He's like, it, does this look convincing to, you know, to, to poor guy? Oh my God. Oh, he breaks my heart. He's, he's my number one. I'll, I'll die for that fake man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he breaks my heart. But so when uh, they were listening to that recording, which we are jumping a bit ahead, but when, yeah. when they were listening to that recording and he started shaking, it, it was uh -huh. so reminiscent of Johan and Nina's reaction that I was like, it, is he was connected to all of this and then we got the reveal a couple chapters later and i was both happy that i actually called something and terribly 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 sad that yeah happened. that he was part of the experiment in 511 kinderheim is that what it's called kinderheim I, yeah yeah and and it's so it's so rough too because the smile wasn't actually a tell that he was trying to fight back the monster it was actually just i I have to learn this because it's such an unnatural feeling because of what was done to me. And right. that's just really devastating. Yeah, it's so, so, and you get the backstory to what happened with, he he was married and had the, the, uh, the baby who, who sounds like it was a, um, like a crib death or something where the baby just stopped breathing or yeah. something. And he tried to revive the baby and feels some kind of, terrible guilt over this because he didn't feel like he had the proper emotions in the moment and his wife was like why are you so calm i'm leaving you right i mean that's just ah yeah. you're unable to feel you're unable to experience emotions or to love yeah 
I imagine, uh, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine. He said he couldn't feel, but obviously he can feel. Yes. He's constantly like, okay, is this the right reaction? Especially when he saw the soccer card, when he saw the drawings, when he realized that he is loved and valued. And uh, he was just like, how do I react to this? I don't know how to react to these strong emotions. And then, of course, we do get to see him finally being able to unlock those emotions again at the end of the bind up. Which I'm really happy Milos, that she, with the boy Milos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really happy he finally was able to access those emotions again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's just devastating all this time that he's not known how he's supposed to respond to feelings. Yeah, yeah. And that was a beautiful moment. You're absolutely right. When he is telling Milos, you are value, you are loved, you this, you are important, you have meaning. And he's trying to counter, Yo I mean, how awful is Johan? I mean, he's been manipulating all kinds of people, but he does it to little kids even without even seemingly thinking about it. So yeah, that that made Johan sink even lower for me um, somehow that he would do that to an innocent child. But that was a beautiful moment with Grimmer and Milos where they actually, he and he was crying and finally really crying and I love Tenma's reaction there as well as he's watching this and he says yeah you're 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 crying now yeah. yeah it's like the whole like there's a healing going on there for Grimmer uh, as well because obviously this is very much reminiscent of him losing his own son um and he's he's trying his own way to <laughs> adopt all these kids you know um in the process of trying to heal himself so but that's a really great part of uh this volume was, was Grimmer's um the reveal and and his development and everything else yeah Grimmer has easily been my favorite part of this entire series so far wow. I'm yeah I'm so attached to him and affected by his story and I just I just and we ended this bind up with him going off to send those letters and yeah I want uh, I want a happy ending for him I do too I do too I I the story is not done with him uh by any means I'm sure yeah I hope not yeah but uh yeah yeah he was great we didn't get much of my boy Reichwein in here not much <laughs> just at the very end when Eva uh shows up uh again and she's my well, we're skipping way ahead your girl we, we are skipping way ahead with that because that's at yeah. the very end but uh we'll we'll get there do you want to say that or do you want to talk about your girl yeah let's no let's do you want to hop back to the beginning and try yeah. to get this yeah. sequentially let's uh, try <laughs> anyway <laughs> so yeah because i i do really want to talk about this recording that yeah. Steve left with his mom and all that because that too was such a great reveal and sort of um not really fake out but twist of expectations uh-huh um so okay so that we start off with them listening to the tape listening to johan read counting right all little boy johan so yeah. li little boy johan he's being questioned and all he can do is repeat this horrifying story um and and they're so affected by it that they have to turn it off which can you blame them yeah. i mean that's that's that creeped me out and I'm not in the room you know <laughs> yeah as soon as they turned it off though I I thought oh no okay they're not going to hear the rest of this recording something is going to happen <laughs> yeah. yeah and and when when Suk's mom when uh they visit her and then she turns on her recording and she starts happily recounting the monster uh, like, story like, ah! <laughs> so yeah. we know where the recording is now but also ah! <laughs> Yeah, and the whole element of her going through dementia, and mm. uh, that's something I've I've seen up close, and it is uh, fairly accurately portrayed here because there are moments of lucidity, and I oh, love yeah. that. I love that Urasawa Urasawa gave her that moment when she got to visit her son in the mm. hospital, and look, I'm I'm coherent today. I need to see my son. Yeah. So that was that was kind of nice. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I'm really glad that he gave her that moment. It's kind of as you said, it's it, it's kind of personal for a lot of readers because we've watched this happen to people we love, yep. and um, be giving that it was almost like giving her an, that honor, honoring her, not just using her as yeah, a device. device. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I too though love that she was the only one that was like, nope, the woman didn't visit me. That was it a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. 
Yeah, she was the she was the one that could identify the true Johan. And I don't know if he'll have, he'll ever do more with that than just that, but I love I love that. We got that. Yeah, that was cool. That was a nice little take there. Um and yeah, we got all kinds of people on the trail including your favorite investigator. Aha, uh -huh, Linga. <laughs> Love to see him again. <laughs> yes. But you know what? I have a crazy prediction. Tell me. About Lunga. But again, I keep skipping ahead, but I have to say my prediction now. Do it. We have all these people reacting to the arrest of Tenma and everybody's like, no, he's innocent. We got to we got to get him out. And none of them really seemed to even visit the doctor who, by the way, he did. He did propose. He uh, did. He did yeah. So they're married and they're happy. And the police son is actually seemingly less of an idiot. Uh, so, yeah, there. I mean, that was nice. But all these people who knew their his former patients, people are getting together and thinking, how can we save Tenma? You know who's going to save him? No. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like at some point at some point ace detective lunga is going to realize wait maybe johan is real and no, i want lunga to drop off the face <laughs> i want him to be a plot thread that's just abandoned i want it to be an unsatisfying piece of this story that never gets utilized because that'll satisfy me that's disrespect to the character and i'll take it <laughs> It's going to be a Lunga Eva tag team effort that's going to save okay, Tenma. Ava. Okay. It's going to be a tag team thing. Oh, okay. Sure. Why not, Philip? <laughs> that's my prediction. Uh, probably, I got one prediction right in this whole thing. That'll, so. that'll, be, that'll be the other one. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I was thinking I probably got my one, but oh, okay. So like you've used up that one. Yeah, I used it. it it's yeah. done. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I it seems to be a one and done sort of thing because I also had that three frogs triplet prediction, and that was way off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know yet, do we? Three frogs is clearly just a location marker. It's not yeah. triplet. <laughs> no triplets. Okay, but also we were we were kind of wandering around whether um whether johan was actually a a, a girl who was right, 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 wearing right, right, a boy right. disguise or was johan and it looks potentially again we're getting ahead like maybe as a child he might have also dressed up as a girl so this might be something that he's very practiced it's like it because you have that whole vision that nina has of i went in this door and i saw myself right so what's going on with that? She she is very scrambled right now. Yeah, well, yeah, I can imagine having your memories return to you piece by piece. Yeah. Would feel very disorienting and would feel like, I remember this weird abstract thing. I can't remember all the details or what it meant. So right. I can understand how she would kind of relay the information the way she did in that scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it does have me wondering if, he dressed as a girl at that point too. And maybe that's also why they, uh, why that one guy was like, no, nope, there was only one kid. So maybe it's because he saw a girl coming in and out, no matter which child it was. And that is not a very nice looking girl either. <laughs> She's sort of like an evil looking girl. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Which so makes me, go ahead. So the, what confuses me about that, though, is that she said, I went into the, this room to read this book, the door opened, and I walked through the door. And then we see this image of the girl in the room with yeah. the window behind her, which means that we were looking at Nina. We weren't looking at Johan there, because Johan would have been walking through the door. Nina would have been in the room. Right. So why did she look so twisted? Exactly. That's exactly what I'm wondering. Also, we get a little bit of, okay, through Schuvalt and other elements, we're beginning to piece together together what happened in the, this, this location, Three Frogs. Apparently the mother took one of the kids, we think, based on the account of the, the, the person who lives on the street, took one of the, the girl, we think, Nina probably, and left another twin was left in the house it seems that, that is the been implication we're given johan who was taken away and brought to uh 511 511 kinderheim 
I that's the implication, right? So if that's what happened, maybe we're beginning to understand where Johan's issues are coming from. Like he was abandoned somehow when his sister was taken away. So I think we have a lot more information coming yeah. because the story we were originally given is that the twins were found at the border alone. Right. And then they took the twins and put one in a boy's orphanage and one in a girl's orphanage. So right. this story we're ju we've just been told does not align no. with the original story. And naturally, the man's going to say one kid was taken because he thought there was only one kid. Right. So that doesn't mean that they weren't taken at separate times. That doesn't mean that this is the moment they went to the orphanage. We could have been lied to in the previous story. And this is the true story. So right. I don't really know. I'm not trying to piece this together just yet because I feel like we have conflicting information, which means that there's another puzzle piece to come. That, that's been a, a hallmark of the series so far, is that we've gotten pieces of information that just do not go together. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, all right, some of this has to be wrong, inaccurate, false, deliberately, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, because it, it just doesn't work. Um, mm -hmm. the chronology doesn't work. We've talked about this before. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that's presented in future volumes, in terms of, okay, here's actually what happened and here's why these other accounts are inaccurate because I feel like we're going to need that for this to be convincing. I yeah. can't just have all these different disparate conflicting accounts and then finally at the end have, oh, and here's the real story. I need to know why are these other accounts all there and and how did they get to be so inaccurate? You know, I very much agree. I think it will feel very unsatisfying if it's just as simple as I was telling the story and then I decided, you know what? No, I think it'll be better if it goes this way. Like that's not going to work out, obviously. Right. Enough people consider this a masterpiece that I assume it will come together. Right. Um, but I also think that this is the kind of story. And I think, I think I've read comments saying this as well, that this is the kind of story that it really doesn't come all, all together until the very last moment. So there's a oh. lot of, okay, just keep reading, wait and see. Okay. Huh. All right. Well, that's good. But jumping back to the recording at the beginning. Yes. They get the awesome twist when they got the recording back and Johan's voice has replaced the uh, the the rest of the recording. So you were right. They did not hear the rest of that recording. Right, right. Uh, but what what was it that he said in that recording? Well, first, he, the adult Johan, who had visited uh, Suk's mother mm -hmm. and had gotten a hold of the the tape basically very cleverly you know of course he's dressed as uh, Anna at that moment um so he says and yeah where's the thing that he left you and oh the tape yeah it's right over there and he he got the tape and he altered it recording over his his boyhood recording but letting them hear just the be the beginning of it and then he said i can't let you hear the rest yeah right, right. And but we also heard the boyhood recording saying that his greatest fear is to lose his sister. Yeah. And we've learned through Grimmer that a big part of what happened to these children is to lose their memories and to lose themselves, yes. to forget yes. their own names. Right. So it's a reasonable fear because he was gonna lose her. So he has had this fascination with Nina from the moment the story started, wanting to reconnect with her, wanting to talk to her. And they obviously, you know, the story is emphasized that they're two parts of the same, that they're, you know, the monster split. You've got Johan saying my other self, I was traveling with my other self. So he clearly valued his sister so much. Yeah. And I, I don't know where this is all taking us, but I think that that's something really important for us to keep in mind and to note. Um, and whatever came next, he didn't want them to hear. Right. Um, and also, back to the children's story too, the, the monster yeah. story, right? With, with the monster with no name. Yeah. And at the end of the story, the monster that becomes Johan eats his sibling, his twin, right? right. As well. So Assumedly. I still haven't fully, I mean, yes, the monster split. One went one direction, the other went the other. And the right. one that is taking over people's bodies growing and then over and then destroying them right. obviously that looks like johan yeah. and then it ends with assumedly johan eating mina right 
Is that truly what, I don't think that's what the, do you think Johan's going to kill Nina? Or do you well, think it's that? Uh, I think that Johan believes that he needs to kill Nina in do some you? way or other. I think so. I think that's where he's eventually going uh, with this or trying to reunite with her in some way. Um, but, you know, it, it, whatever it is, it's a threat to Nina for sure. Um, it's not going to be something nice. <laughs> he's not going to be. Yeah. Let's reminisce, sis, about the old days. I don't think that's what he's trying to do. I think there's something sinister to it, but it's hard to tell what, I still don't really understand Johan's end game or if he even has one that's coherent. Um, the, the, the story seems to be the key though. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is either trying to enact the story in some way or other, or the story is some bizarre, uh prediction about him or and of course we find out a little bit more about the author here who has all these different names but the one part the one name that seems to be the more valid i guess or not that it's real but is bonaparte right mm -hmm. um so the bonaparte is the only one that has an actual address this mansion with the roses and stuff where we find lunga finding that secret door that's been plastered over and getting into this room where he knows all kinds of bad stuff happened in there, right? So who is this Bonaparte guy? So I'm kind of back to the bio dad theory. Yeah. Uh, because the story, the author of the story came into the that guy's office and said, okay, I have another story. The monsters fall in love. No, you don't want that one. Okay, how about this story? There's a hidden door. So, yeah. and then and then we cut to Lunga, who's found a hidden door. What's inside that door? But a portrait of the twins' mom. Right. So I kind of wonder if maybe the author wrote the monster story about his twins. The monster, maybe maybe he considers himself a monster too. The bio dad fell in love. Hmm. Hidden door where the portrait is so i wonder if maybe this is their old estate and mom took the kids and ran away from the monster and got that apartment oh you know what i mean yeah huh yeah we do learn more about i now i i, I speculated last time that maybe shuval the billionaire is somehow i think the only connection is through the fact that shuval fathered a carl with the woman who, Margot Langer, um, whose real name is Helen, Helena or Helenka, something or other. Um, she's friends with the twins mother. That's the connection. Um, and I think you're probably right that this, this Bonaparte guy more likely is the father of the twins, considering we saw her, her the woman who is the mother. We still don't know her name really, do we? No, I don't believe. No, she exists. No, no, we did. We did get a name for her. We I get think. a name for her, I the mother of the twins. I'm not sure I wrote it down though. Okay, huh? I must have uh, forgotten that. But anyway, whoever she is, <laughs> she is in his sketchbook as and when she's pregnant. Yeah, and she's also on the wall there in the portrait. So it seems like Bonaparte. She's very significant to him. And that most likely he is the father of the twins. But that's, yeah, that, what what's motivating this guy? Why is he doing He's seemingly involved in all these experiments on these kids. He's got this psychology background. And he writes children's books. Uh, <laughs> that's so creepy. Right. So yeah, I'm still trying to reconcile. And I don't even know if I have all the details straight. But we have the one guy who is doing the experiments on the children that Grimmer is, can, is attached to. Right. And he said that he was a part of the original experiments with right. Johan and that that sort of experimentation got taken from him and twisted, but he calls it his experiment. Yeah. And yet here we have uh, bon Bonaparte, who seems like maybe he could be the originator or maybe he's the one that twisted it. But also, why would the twins be at the border and collected by Wolf and renamed by Wolf? 
if BioDad was involved in all this. So there's a lot of, again, we're back to the conflicting information, puzzle pieces that aren't quite fitting together. So I don't really know at this point. I think right. we just have to keep reading and find another puzzle piece. I guess because then you also have that other element in here, the colonel from the Czech secret police, whose nephew, yeah. he he actually donated his nephew to this experiment and feels well, a lot he of- didn't know. Yeah, okay. He was, to be he fair. was told that this was a good home for the child to be raised in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he feels some guilt about that. And um, there's he he has some tears over it, you know, when Grimmer is telling, him, okay, you want to know what this was like? All right, here you go. And oh, by the way, I do remember this kid who I love how he there are just these little random details. Like he once he gave me his hot chocolate, um, and you know, he remembers these details, and and as he's recounting these specific details, the colonel just starts weeping, understanding, yeah, that's my nephew. Yeah. Remember all about me. Yeah. They're losing themselves. So they promised each other that they would remember each other. That's yeah. really freaking sad, Philip. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. It's it's tough. Yeah, I tell you what, I was this close to having to put the whole thing down if if Milos was going to, you know, I could not, I was gonna, I was like, you know, this is just too dark for me. I cannot do this. Thank goodness Grimmer and Tenma came along and, and uh, because that was going to be just the, the a little too much for me, you know. Chapters 98 and 99 were rough. Yeah, to... yeah. So you want to talk about them? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, these chapters sucked. And um, as an adoptive mom, I know right. that a child who has... Uh, who has been separated from their parents for one reason or another, oftentimes has those questions. Um, yeah. You know, was I not good enough? Did they not yeah. love me? Yeah. So the image of an adult identifying that weakness and drilling into it. And sending a little kid into a red light district to find out. Here's at reality night. kid at night. Yeah. So I, uh, I think this is the most evil thing. I've watched Johan do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. So that was that was obviously really, really rough. Really, really rough. However, it was really good to actually see Johan in action. Because up to this point, we've been told what a great manipulator he is. Right. We actually watched him identify a weakness in this child, yeah. drill into that weakness, as we've been told that he does, and then send this child off with the words echoing in his mind, if if you call out, if nobody or if nobody calls out to you, it means she never wanted you. With yeah. these words echoing in his mind, at the worst possible time to walk into the red light district in right. the middle of the night to spiral, yeah. to unravel. Um we as horrible as these chapters were we actually got to see johan be the master manipulator than that up to this point for a hundred chapters we've only been told so i think that it was essential to have a scene like this with johan did it have to be a poor innocent child maybe not but it was essential to see something like this i think it's also significant that johan's Johann is essentially a, a figure of despair and hopelessness because he sees the darkness. Everything is darkness. Humanity within every human is this monster. And we're all at heart worse than beasts. You know, we, we're, we're selfish. We're, we're destructive. Everything is darkness. And you, you see him pushing Milos in his face into this by putting him in the red light district where he sees horrible things he sees exploitation of one human by another he sees the 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 german school teacher who is basically he's using a prostitute in an alleyway and he says hey kid watch this you know there's all this really awful stuff that this kid witnesses the worst of humanity and that's johan's message essentially is that we're awful we're horrible everything is darkness thank goodness you have the moment 
after this where uh, Grimmer and Tenma find Milos by the bridge. And I feel like that's the moment that says, no, actually, we had this other potential in us too. We have the potential to love. We have the potential to connect. We have the potential to lift each other up through those connections. We have the potential yeah. for beauty, right? And we have the potential to break through when darkness has affected us, when darkness yeah. has harmed us, changed us. Because one would say that that moment or those many moments in the red light district changed that child. And when the darkness changes us, we have the opportunity to break through that back into goodness and kindness and freedom, which I think we got to see with Grimmer finally breaking through what had been done to him yeah. as well as comforting the child. Yeah, absolutely. So suck on that, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's hard because it again, the timeline is still so fuzzy in this in this series. Right. But it seems as if it seems as if Johan was evil before he went to this experiment. That's what I'm wondering. How did this kid end up so messed up? And that's why I was thinking. Gotta be the dad. If if Bio Dad is who we think he is, the yeah. author, then one would think he's been messing with this child far earlier than when he got sent to 511. Yeah, and something happened to Johan that didn't happen to Nina, obviously. Either that or Nina has been playing a long con on us, the readers. Ooh. <laughs> because the only reason I don't want that to be true I love Nina's character right I don't think she's bad but the only reason that I'm still kind of hung up on that potential is because the child that was in the room was supposed to be Nina and she looked devilish when the, right. uh, when the other self walked into the room and I unless was that was Johan unless it was Johan but she said I went to this room to read the book. I was in this room right. and then myself walked through the door. And then we look at the picture of the child that's in the room. So unless this is just a mistake on Urasawa's part and he meant to draw a child, he meant to draw Johan. So he should have dr drawn a child in the doorway. Right. Assuming this isn't a mistake, which can happen. You know, it is what it is. Assuming he didn't make a mistake. This is Mina. That we were looking at with that distorted mm. smile. Yeah, yeah. So it's possible that Nina was also messed with by Bio Dad or by whatever, and then she was able to break through the darkness. Mm -hmm. Or she, suppressed a lot of this stuff, obviously. Suppressed it. It's also possible. Remember that thing that I'm really hung up on where Nina was on the docks and she was screaming at Tenma, I figured it out. There's two Johans. I have to shoot him twice. Yeah. It's possible that she got messed up by she got twisted by these experiments too she did some devilish things some evil things too and right. lost those memories when she shot her brother and lost all her memories forgot who she was right. and then as things started coming back she remembered what she used to be and what she used to do and in her mind she's like there's two johans i'm just as twisted as him i have to kill him i have to eliminate myself too that's Otherwise what i'm scared of yeah the idea that to, de to defeat Johan, Nina's going to try to kill herself or, or sacrifice herself. Yeah, I'm playing with the idea that she has a darker past that has dawned on her. And that's what she means by the two Johans comment. Mm. Uh, I think we can eliminate DID at this point. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. it. Seems like it. So I really hope that's not true. I obviously don't want that for Nina. And we've seen throughout the se with, throughout this story already that if you have been harmed by another individual's evil intent you can be redeemed from that you can push through it you can choose your own future grimmer is the perfect example of that yeah so i don't think the message of the story would be yep nina's evil too i would think that she could push back past that too i would hope so yeah i hope so too i mean i i have high hopes for her character and i would hate to see she just seems like a testament to the fact that you you can like we were saying just a moment ago not only survive something as traumatic as this kind of experimentation although because maybe she was spared some of it at least because of the fact she was a girl and they seem to be targeting boys to make them into these soldiers yes. or whatever That's so right. 
hopefully, yeah, she's she's just kind of um, not gotten the full brunt of it, like Johan, and um, is but that she's able to find her humanity in spite of what was done to her. Um, like we see finally poor Grimmer doing, um, you know. Uh, <gasps> yeah. I just realized I was just flipping through my notes to see if we forgot anything. Oh, good. I'm glad you're showing that. Yeah. yeah. See, it, she said I was in the room and then my other self, myself walked through the door and then Welcome we're seeing, home. Yeah. We're seeing this twisted individual in the room. Yeah. So myself through the door, we've been told over and over again that Johan and Nina, that's my other self. So yeah. I think it was Johan. Okay. Anyway. We I got just, all these fragmented memories too, right? The breaking wine glass, the dudes in the front of the car saying you must never hide things from him. Mm -hmm. The rose, the roses again, and somebody getting mm -hmm. cut on the rose bush. Human in the gobble gobble chomp chomp. You know, that is so creepy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. It really is. They they obviously were in this manner, I think. I think right. we can say. With certain human beings can become or... anything and this is is this their mother is that who that is i think so yeah um is this okay. the guy is this is this a glimpse of the uh of uh bonaparte oh human maybe. beings can become anything he's saying maybe and he looks like he looks like someone we've seen before i can't identify yet i need to flip back through yeah and see. but i think we've seen that guy before yeah Feels like, yeah. All right. Anyway, poor, poor uh, Nina is trying to figure all this out. And then there's like, the, there's that, I mean, that has to be the mother, right? I think so. We, I mean, we've seen her portrait, but obviously a drawing and a portrait. I mean, yeah. it's hard to say, right. but I was flipping through my notes to make sure we didn't forget anything. And I remember something else that we were told about this, um, the, what was his name? The Rose Manor guy? The Bonaparte? Bonaparte. Something we were told about Bonaparte. Um, where did it go now? Okay, whatever. We were told that he was a brain surgeon. Yes, like Tenma. Yeah. Like Tenma. Daddy. Yeah. And Johan said, you remind me of my father. Father. Yeah. I think this is bio dad. Yeah. And maybe bio dad, because remember my original theory was bio dad. And then I was like, maybe I need to change it to thinking that the book is connected to the orphanage instead. But yeah. if you said that bio dad was a part of these experiments, then it could be both. Yeah. I mean, it seems like he's tied to these experiments pretty intimately. And if he's some kind of brain surgeon, uh, you know, with some deeper understanding of he thinks of human psychology and the way we work, the way we tick, it's interesting to see him being this parallel in some ways to Tenma, right? Yes. Um, I mean, not parallel because Tenma is obviously not like an evil, <laughs> yeah. manipulative, uh, creepy dude. But it could be a parallel, just like potential different directions. But we can see why Johan has latched on yeah. to Tenma. Beside, aside from the fact that Tenma saved his life, no. he reminds him of his father in some significant ways. So, yeah. And maybe that's why Johan seems to be playing with Tenma because he reminds him of his father in some key ways. Because right. again, I don't feel like Johan's trying to kill Tenma. I think he's toying I, with him. I think so. Yeah, I, I don't, he would have killed Tenma a long time ago. You know, yeah, he's had then. loads of opportunities. He's messing with his mind. So maybe that's why, because dad messed with his mind. And so he sees someone who reminds him of dad. So now he's doing the manipulating. Hmm. We're yeah. doing a lot of lunga eating right now. We're doing a lot of like speculating and <laughs> yeah. no hard evidence. No, but that's all we can do. That's all we can do. We have all these conflicting accounts. I was gratified to see people putting two and two together though and saying, hmm, three chocolate bonbons when the hospital administrators were killed. Hmm, three chocolate bonbons when, and then Johan uses that uh, to frame for Suk as well, who really gets kind of, <laughs> gets shot multiple times in here. Suk really doesn't have a very good time in this volume, does he? No, and then Grimmer in the corner huddled up, uh, breaking down because he- And becoming out. Steiner again, right? Yeah. yeah, a lot happened. This is my new favorite bind up. Last time was my, last time I was like, this is the best one since the beginning. This is, this is my new top of the series. 
Been two is, really great ones in a row, I have to say. We really have. After after a bit of a drought, in my opinion, uh, wow. we've had some great content. Yeah, I agree. And um, the it feels like a lot of the fans think the finish is, of course, I did have I did have somebody comment too that actually the finish is a bit controversial, like it's a little divisive. So I'll be interested to see. But most people are saying the the end is like mind blowing and amazing. So, but we'll see. I mean, if it we'll see. if it continues to be as breathtaking and interesting and uh, as these two last two volumes in the perfect edition of Ben then yeah, this is, this is definitely, a, and if he sticks at landing in any way whatsoever, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome storytelling. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Same here. And we may or may not be joined by our friend Patrick in our next discussion. Hopefully we will, <laughs> Hopefully uh, we will. which will be on Murphy's channel uh, as we keep going back and forth here. And um, I am, and you probably are as well, collecting all of these in a playlist for anyone who might want to just watch them in a, in a row. Uh, right. So yeah, but well, thank you so much, Murphy. Uh, we, we got a couple things, right. I'm excited. Do you have any predictions or anything you want to end with for, for uh, the next volume? No, I think we have exhausted our wild speculating. <laughs> Probably so. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching and for your awesome comments, for helping us along the way, for indulging our, our theories and uh, everything else. Uh, so, everybody, until next time. Bye.